Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome everyone to the WIC Fortune 100 Lunch and Learn with Insight. My name is Rais Noel. I'm the Global Events Program Lead with Women in Cloud. And we are so excited to welcome you today for this uh, special session where we'll get to learn from leaders at Insight. For those of you where this is your first time joining us for one of these sessions, you're in for a real treat. Uh, there's lots to uh, to cover and you'll get to meet people and learn and get insights from Insight. Uh, so with that, I'll just start by getting you comfortable with this space that we're in right now. For, uh, for those of you where Remo platform is new, we wanna be sure that you know that you can engage in the chat, share your comments, use the uh, use the emojis to uh, to share your reactions. And in today's session, Insight is going to be sharing with us the power of strategic partnering with Insight. And then we'll have a power panel uh, with some leaders from the organization talking about the trifecta approach to building that strategic relationship in regards to you know talent, business development, and alliances. Then we're going to have a cloud solution showcase. And that's where we have two entrepreneurs from the Women in Cloud ecosystem that are going to uh, showcase and demo their innovative solutions so that you can learn more about them and uh, find out about their solutions that, they're, that they've developed and that are ready for enterprise. Then the highly sought after experience is the advisor roundtable experience. So we have some advisors from Insight that are gonna be talking about all sorts of uh, different things, partnerships, uh, breaking into, in, getting into Insight, job opportunities, uh, so on and so forth. And uh, you'll have some time to meet with those folks in the virtual lounge. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Chaitra Vidulapalli to tell you a little bit more about Women in Cloud and then introduce Amy Protexter from, from Insight for Her Power Talk. So welcome, Chaitra. Thank you, Raisa, for a warm welcome. So excited. It's Friday. So happy Friday to all of you. I'm really excited to be here and uh, really a warm welcome to all of you. So we are so excited that you're with us and we get to connect, learn, and explore uh, opportunities with Insight. And uh, Insight is a publicly traded global technology company that focuses on business to business and information technology capabilities for enterprises. Uh, Insight focuses on three primary solution areas, which is cloud and data center transformation, connected workforce, and digital innovation. Uh, the best thing about uh, uh, Insight is they're recognized as one of the world's best employers. So we want to give a warm welcome to all the Insight leaders who are with us today and engaging with the Women in Cloud community. And by and also thank you for joining the ecosystem and collectively solving the global crisis that we have in front of us for women. So for people who are new to WIC, I am Chaitra Vedalapali. I'm the co-founder and president of Women in Cloud. Uh, we are a community-led and economic development organization with an audacious goal to create a billion dollars in economic access for female founders and professionals in the enterprise ecosystem. So we collaborate with the fortune brands and communities to advance workforce development, supplier access to female founders, community development, and also policy advancement. So today fortune 100 lunch and, you know, lunch and learn series is really designed uh, for us to connect and learn and explore opportunities. So the, our partnership with Insight has been one of the most incredible partnerships. So they help us focus on impact and also help us to take bold steps. And this is because of Amy Proctexter. She's the Senior Vice President of uh, Marketing at Insight in North America. And Amy has always been fascinated by ideas. So as a history major of uh, Augustina College, she noticed the way a single idea expresses itself in different forms through the conduct, art, and culture of a society. 
and her talent for connecting those ideas into a compelling message led by Amy to her master's degree in executive leadership from the University of Nebraska. Her success at leading change in corporate cultures brought her to Insight, where she guided the company's global rebranding and continued evolution and works daily to distill its message to the world through some of the channel's most compelling digital marketing strategies. She started her career in healthcare, where she developed an ability to challenge an organization's status quo and better align its mission and messaging. As Senior Vice President and Chief Marketing and Communication Officer for Allegiant Health, and later as Vice President at Vanguard Health System, she created messaging, project, and advocacy efforts to push a structured corporate healthcare system into a more patient-centric model. So in 2012, Amy took her innovative approach into education. So as a vice president of marketing at Edge Ingenuity, she led a complete renaming and rebranding of the digital learning provider. She also fostered internal and external strategies that focused the corporate message and emphasized student empowerment. So Amy joined Insight in 2014 as Vice President of Marketing and was promoted to Senior Vice President North America Marketing in September 2017. As a lifelong learner, Amy applied the latest marketing ideas to the company's global rebranding and support Insight's identity as a problem-solving provider that puts the client first. So I am so excited to have her here, but also very excited to announce that Amy joins the board of directors for Women in Cloud, and she is committed and she's ready to influence and collaborate with us to leapfrog all of us to make the Women in Cloud the most influential brand in the industry. I am so fortunate and the entire Women in Cloud ecosystem is so fortunate to be working closely with her and really blessed to have her. So with that, Amy, we are so excited to have you here and kick off today's session. Hey, Chai, great to be here with all of you today. Um, and really excited to share a little bit about Insight Story with some of my wonderful colleagues here um, at our company. So, um, you know, I think, uh, a really good thing to sort of ground oneself in the context. And, and so a lot of the people that you will be hearing from today um, are the people who really drive the culture and experience at Insight for our fellow teammates, but also for our clients. So I wanted to start with uh, just a little bit of the history and story of Insight and where we are today and, and why working with Insight, uh, whether as a teammate, as a client, um, as a partner, why those things are are maybe differentiated um, when you think about insight in our in our industry. Um, so I'm going to cover briefly just these three different um, approaches, three different um, I guess elements of of who we are. The first thing is our culture. Uh, the second is our ambition. And finally, I do want to make sure that I share with this group um, all of the wonderful growth opportunities that we have at our company. So uh, with that, let's get started and talk a little bit about our culture. Next slide, please. So at Insight, um, our CEO, Ken Lamnick, who's been in his seat for 12 years, actually will be retiring January 1st. Um, we will be very sad to see him go. He's been an incredible leader for our organization. And one of the things he established is this um, Insight on a page, we call it. So this one page really outlines the most important things you need to know about Insight, our purpose, we build meaningful connections to help businesses run smarter. Our three values, hunger, heart, and harmony. Our business goals for next year, the solutions that we offer, and I'll cover a little bit more about that when I talk about our ambition, and uh, the leadership commitments that as leaders of the company, we all adhere to um, and model um, as, as we lead our organization into the future. Next slide, please. 
Our focus on culture has been noted by some of the most um, prestigious news organizations. Um, as a member of the Fortune 500 at 360, we have also been recognized as one of the world's most admired companies, one of the world's best employers. In fact, number 12 in the IT um, list this year, improving from number 27 last year. Um, we've been noted for our uh, our focus on we've been noted for our focus on veterans, and you can see just how this extends not only in the U.S. but around the world. Um, our culture is driving a lot of recognition, and it's something I think people really genuinely love to be a part of. Next slide, please. The second thing is our ambition. And so Chaitra talked a little bit in the opening about our three solution areas. And a very recent development is that we have actually reconceived how we think about the solutions that we want to offer to our clients. Um, as the world evolves and we evolve quickly, there is um, you know, the need as a company to continue to evolve to meet the needs of our clients. And so our ambitious three-year strategy is to become an industry-recognized solution integrator. And through a number of acquisitions over the last few years, we have positioned ourselves incredibly well for this ambition. Um, if you wanna to go to the next slide, you will be able to see a little bit deeper cut on the kinds of expertise we can bring to our clients. Things like our modern workplace solutions, modern apps, modern infrastructure, but also helping our clients explore the power of the intelligent edge, um, leveraging data and AI, and of course, um, something on everyone's minds, protecting every company from the cybersecurity threats that are just so ever present um, in our world today. We support those with um, a number of really um, incredible services, some of which are built on our legacy technology business um, and really provide a way for our clients to experience multiple ways we can help them achieve their own ambitions. Next slide. Finally, I just wanna speak a little bit about the growth opportunities at Insta under the leadership of our CEO, Ken Lamnick, and soon to be Joyce Mullen. I'm really excited that we will have another female joining. Um, at, um, she's already president, but but becoming our CEO at that, at that level. Um, we've focused a tremendous amount over the last few years on leadership. And I, I don't know about all of you, but I feel like the world is in desperate need of more leaders these days. And so our focus on leadership development um, to create an entire continuum for uh, young first time managers um, and, and aspiring managers all the way through our senior executive team, um, which gets together for about three to four days every single year globally to learn and grow together. Um, this has really been an incredible experience. I mean, as a student of leadership all my life, um, having access to these kinds of offerings, is it's just been incredible. So um, I think it's important for you all to know the level at which we, we focus on leadership um, and leadership development. And finally, um, part of that, I think, is really looking for opportunities like this one with Women in Cloud. Like, finding ways of partnership to help everyone grow. Um, I have learned so much from people like Chaitra, um, and I love the networking opportunity that Women in Cloud has brought me to meet so many amazing women, entrepreneurs, partners, um, emerging leaders. And I think, you know, Leveraging Women in Cloud, um, and I'm so excited, by the way, by the opportunity to help make this the recognized brand for women in technology. I think that is just an incredible ambition, and I'm so excited to get started as a member of the board. Um, but I do want to thank Women in Cloud for all of the opportunities that they are creating for women um, in, multiple, in multiple ways, from entrepreneurship and support to get people um, you know, well positioned to take their products to market, to working more deeply with corporate uh, corporations like Insight as a supplier, um, and finding employment. Certainly, we have a tremendous need for very talented 
uh, technologists, and we'd love for those to be more women. So with that, I'm really excited to introduce uh, four of my colleagues, amazing women, amazing leaders at, at our company. Uh, Michelle Rowe, who is the Director of HR for Insight and leads our diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. Um, Jen Marks, who's a Senior Program Manager for Diversity at Insight. Suzanne Gallagher, Vice President of our Go-To-Market at Insight. And finally, Brooke Meunier, a Director in our Client Experience uh, team. So these ladies um, are going to talk a little bit about uh, some of the other things that are, are going on at Insight. And I'm just so excited to turn it over to Michelle, who's going to serve as our moderator. Great. Thank you so much, Amy. And I am so incredibly honored to be here with all of you today. Uh, my name is Michelle Rowe, as Amy said, and I have the honor of leading our diversity, leadership, and organization development team uh, here at Insight. And I, you, well, most of you have heard me say this, that anybody who works with me, I have the best job in the world uh, because we get to impact the culture and our teammates and our communities every single day. Uh, now, I'm sure some of these faces that you see right now will argue with me on that because they probably believe the same about their roles. Uh, but I just wanted to give a minute for everybody to introduce themselves and then we will go ahead and jump in. As Amy said, I am moderating, but because I do have uh, the background of really impacting the diversity and leadership for our teammates and everything internal there, if there's anything that comes up or any questions, uh, I will jump in and answer some of those as well. So Suzanne, I want to start with you. Do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit more? Absolutely. Um, Suzanne Gallagher, um, as Amy said, I run our go to market strategy and solutions, which is um, I, as well one of the best jobs, I think, uh, working <laughs> with such great team members. Uh, I live in Colorado. I've been with the company about five years, um, 30 years in IT, um, 30. I'm not that old. I started really young um, and I'm thrilled to be here. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much, Brooke. Let's go over to you. All right. Hello, everyone. Brooke Meunier, uh, Director of Client Experience at Insight. I'm based in Chicago. I have been with Insight a whopping 18 years now um, and served in a variety of roles across operations, service delivery, now focused on really creating um, an outstanding client experience. Happy to be here. All right. Great. Thanks, Brooke. All right, Jen. Hi, everyone. My name is Jen Marks, and I am the leader over Insights Supplier Diversity Program Office. I have been with the company um, almost 20 years, and I sit in Insights uh, headquarters, so in Tempe, Arizona, and I am also honored to be here today. All right, fantastic. Well, thank thank you all very, very much. I am going to jump right into questions because I know there's a lot of interest in all of the things that we are about to talk about today. And Brooke, I'm going to start with you. So I'm going to, and I'm going to ask all of you this exact same question, but okay. Brooke, how did Insight, so I know 18 years, how did Insight really support your career growth? Because you said a lot of different roles, variety of different departments. Sure. So I would say first and foremost, it's been about uh, the leadership team, right? So over the years, um, you know, I've had the privilege of working for leaders who have, given me opportunities to take on new challenges, right? Even if that meant, you know, stepping out of their team and into another leader's team, taking on something I hadn't done before, um, but uh, really giving me that opportunity to grow and of course, giving me the support to do that. And so believe me when I say, I, I see it as my obligation to pay that back every day in the, uh, the women and other teammates that I support. So first and foremost, the, the leaders, I'd also certainly have to call out just some of the access I've had to top-notch training and development programs. Um, and then last but not least, just the culture. So, you know, every day I'm surrounded by teammates who are equally as curious about how can we improve and, and what technology solutions can we really integrate to have a bigger impact. And that exposure and that sort of, you know, um, you know working with A players every day really helps me to up my game. Awesome. Thank you. Suzanne, how about you? 
You know, I, I would echo a lot of what, what Brooke said, right? I think in, you know, in my stay, and, and I've been through 22 acquisitions in my career, not, not on purpose. 22? Just kind of been, yeah, yeah. So, you know, this, this kind of bringing goodness of cross groups of people and mm -hmm. embracing that and, and seeing where their paths are. And so coming to Insight via acquisition and seeing Insight do additional acquisitions, right? That, that, that constant culture of how to make you the best you can be and, and offering that it's self-serve and meaning like you've got to go take advantage of that. Right. But, uh, but fundamentally having such broad offerings and support mechanisms and, you know, mentorship and, and uh, training and, and just exposure to the breadth of portfolio and a players is really what's uh, what's phenomenal about the company from that perspective. Awesome. Thank you. And Jen, in 20 years, how about you? <laughs> so for me, I, I have to say there's always been a really transparent path to success. And like, you know, Brooke says, it really comes down to the leadership and, mm -hmm. you know, whether that's goal setting, whether that's spending time in one-on-ones, um, it's, it's always been there and it's, it's been very clear. And so for me, what I, I take away from all of it is that, you know, in addition to kind of paying it forward is always to kind of make sure that you're continuing to learn. And what's really great about Insight is that I've never once in my almost 20 years been turned down for, you know, asking, hey, you know what, could we set up a one-on-one, -on -one, have a mentor, you know, mentee kind of relationship? Can I spend a little bit of time with you on a quarterly basis? Not that, you know, you can't get what you need from your managers, but there's different people in the organization, right, that you can learn from every day. And so I've loved the fact that I've always had that ability to reach out to an executive and say, can you spend time with me? And I've never once been told, though. That's awesome. That's awesome. And we're talking a lot about mentorship right here and leadership and really the people that we're surrounded with every single day, right? And I think we all feel extremely lucky about that. Suzanne, um, speaking of leadership, so how does Insight really work to develop our leaders and at the same time really ensure alignment? So we have a business strategy, we have culture strategy. How do we make sure that that leadership, culture strategy, and business strategy is always aligned? always aligned we don't sleep. or as often as um, possible <laughs> we don't sleep, don't sleep i think is what no no um you know i think you know like any large organization even small organization you want people to have focus and empowered for what they're good at but you also have to make sure the weave between those pieces come together and from a leadership perspective i think that empowerment of of you know and clarity of understanding your goals the outcome you have to drive, and that the important financial and business strategy is just as important as your team developing, right? That mm -hmm. equally important is the development of the team that's going to deliver on those outcomes and those strategies um, across the different individual, you know, SME groups and, and what they're thriving at. So, so I think, you know, leadership bringing teams to the table and then also really enforcing kind of a red teaming philosophy, right? We work together, you drive, you're empowered to go drive what you're great at, um, but you're held just as accountable to what you're great at as to how you're working great with everybody else on the table. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said. Brooke, same question to you. How do you see that, uh, making sure that we have that alignment there? Yeah, this one is, it's so important. And, and I always think about the fact that we're in such a fast moving industry, right? Mm -hmm. um, we can't have these uh, sort of rigid goals or, um, um, you know, we've got to be flexible and nimble to be able to keep, it, keep up with the pace of change. Now that said, um, I think we've done a really good job knowing how important it is to align teams to to whatever the business strategy is and to make sure we're all working in that direction to set those frameworks, right? So I know we spend a lot of time really getting the framework right that drives the right level of consistency and expectations. And Amy spoke a little bit to this when she kicked off talking about all the work we've done to really uh, and revisit every year. What is our mission? What is our ambition? You know, we're really working to integrate solutions that help our clients' businesses run smarter. That's it. Everybody at Insight knows that, right? And then having those other frameworks around our leadership commitments, right? How are we creating clarity? 
How are we demonstrating thought leadership? How are we inspiring our people and delivering results, right? So that helps um, and that's durable, right? That's durable even though some of the other parts and pieces move and then our values, right? Hunger, heart and harmony. So that framework helps and those create tools. I mean, I can tell you as a leader, I use those tools for setting my goals, my team's goals. I use those tools in interviewing. I use that for succession planning. I use it for coaching and mentoring. That really helps to make sure we stay aligned. I love that. And I love that you're talking about how those, the, the, the leadership commitments and the values really are that foundation. And then as things flex and move, because business really does change all the time, uh, mm -hmm. that we make sure that we really have that consistency. So that's fantastic. Jen, how about you? Anything to add there? I really think about our kind of our robust training, you know, and, and leadership programs that we have, right? Whether it's purpose-driven leadership or it's something that's even more trickle down to public speaking, it just really kind of brings the collective together and it brings forward not just our values and our commitments, but it, it has everybody together on the same team, right? Feeling the same feels and, and coming together in a common goal. I love that. I love that. So we were talking about uh, really both internal and external, the communities, the cultures. Brooke, can you dig in a little bit to how Insight gives back to our communities uh, externally, but also internally as well? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I didn't mention this when I introduced myself, but I also have the very, very great privilege of sitting on the board of the in, uh, Insight In It Together Foundation. Um, and this is a, it is an internal program. I'll talk about the external in a moment here, but this is really a, a, a nonprofit that we've formed that is funded by teammate contributions, payroll deductions that people volunteer um, week after week to help fellow teammates anonymously, but to help fellow teammates who are experiencing crisis or hardship in their lives. And Oh my goodness, the stories that that come in and how we're able to help, you know, whether it's help with medical expenses for a child that's ill or funeral costs or um, the list just goes on. Right. And so I'm just so proud of the work we've done there. It's absolutely had an impact, um, you know, on our community internally. We also have done a lot of work internally with our teammate resource groups and really creating a space for communities within the, the broader insight community. Um, and then externally, we've done, um, we, we have an overarching uh, program called REACH that really encompasses all of those in-market giving, um, community giving and initiatives. So, um, you know, our partnership with United Way and Ronald McDonald House and, and the list goes on. And then we give our teammates um, paid time off to volunteer. And it could be with some, one of those programs that I mentioned, but it could be with something in their community as well. So really, really putting that focus on, um, you know, making our community stronger, both internally and externally. That's awesome. And, you know, it's when you were talking about in it together uh, and really helping our teammates with any kind of crises that, that might come up. Uh, it struck me too, that we do a lot in that with, um, our teammates that are impacted by natural disasters, hurricanes, things like that, oh, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so it's like the individuals as well, but then entire communities that are hit by big events. So really just offering that support and making sure that they have everything that they need. So a, just an incredible, yeah. incredible program that we have. Suzanne, Jen, anything you want to add to either what we do uh, within your communities, internally, externally? No, sure. I mean, Brooke I think said it, right? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Jen. No, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I think that that you know the company offers first of all organizing internally and externally is just amazing, both from a board as Brooke said and the teamwork, but but just individuals who get supported like I've got this great thing that's going on in my community and teammates will jump on board and whether it fits in reach or it's personally something that they're experiencing like you have those options, right? And and yeah. and then obviously it still takes a teammate to self-start, but the company puts out so much framework and support to to bring those things to the table. It's really phenomenal because well I said, don't well find said. time to organize myself. So it helps me be organized, which is fantastic. That's right? empowering though, right? Yeah. Knowing good ideas can come from anywhere, but we're supporting that overall, right? Exactly, exactly. And they get heard, right? That uh, yes. can be heard. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Great. And Jen. Yeah, I wanted to mention, you know, the, the grassroots efforts or the department efforts, right, that also happen in addition to all of that kind of that company support. So the, the 
departments that I've been a member of right now, a member of the, the finance team at Insight. And, you know, for, for this year, the, the TSS group, the teammate group within finance is supporting, you know, a few different um, male foster homes and, you know, providing gifts and, and needs to them. And I just think that's really great to watch it both at the company level and then trickle down for all of us to participate where we can. I love that. I love that. And I, the thing is, too, is that it's so interesting as we get to watch, obviously, from an HR perspective as well, all of the things that are coming in and the photos that people are sending over and the individual, uh, very the, the things that they're passionate about, right, in their communities and in their markets. And so it's just, it's incredible to watch. And there's so much momentum around all yeah. of that with our with our leaders and our teammates. So it's, it's really a powerful impact that we're having on those communities. So I love that. I'm going to shift gears just a little bit. Uh, Suzanne, I'm going to start with you on this one. So obviously, the last 18 months, 20 months now, oh my goodness gracious, um, it's been a, a big shift in the way that the world works. Uh, and obviously it takes a lot of strategy to figure out how to really make things work in this world that we're in right now. So what did Insight do to really make sure that we were supporting teammates, ensuring business continuity when everything changed overnight? Yeah. So, gosh, so so many great things, right? I would say the first step was because we, as teammates, understood the culture is like problem, jump to action. Mm -hmm. Like we are a swarm community. Like when there's a problem, we swarm. We swarm functionally. We swarm across. We swarm personally. We swarm. And and that was immediate, right? For for both our already existing remote workforce, which we mm -hmm. had in place, fortunately, and could scale up infrastructure wise to support that to our locations that even in a remote workforce were very dependent on internet access that didn't exist. Um, and to our communities who were very dependent on internet accent, our school districts, our counties, our places um, who couldn't get devices or couldn't get headsets in hospitals, um, who couldn't get iPads in hospitals, um, you know, from all parts of the crisis, both from a business perspective and a personal perspective, we swarmed, which was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And everybody brought to the table what they were good at um, to accentuate, right? And it wasn't just about, cause I'm the hardest hit in this community or I've lost family members or um, my per you know, my parents' business went out of business or it, it was from all aspects, we kind of swarmed and collectively prioritized where we could support people to be the most successful as soon as possible. Over time, we just listened, I think, really well mm -hmm. all the time and encouraged not just listening to our teammates, but listening to our clients and our partners, um, because during times of strife for our clients and our partners, we swarmed. Obviously, you can't swarm everywhere, but we swarmed, right? Uh, an, a market or a vertical segment that was particularly hit hard um, we wanted to be there for that client, even though they might not be able to do the business they were doing with us before or continue to do the business we did before um, and just listen to continue through that process for our teammates who after 12 months and 18 months um, have depression, not just because personally, just because they're gregarious people and they haven't been around people and uh, or, you know, whether they were dealing something at home. I mean, even simple things like having events at the holidays where we're hosting mm -hmm. game night or parties for people who are secluded um, to very large things in the community. So, you know, there were so many ways, but I think that swarm mentality about supporting and rallying around and prioritizing our risks and, uh, and our issues and then collectively going and executing and the, the company just supporting those actions um, mm -hmm. just, it just was, uh, I mean, really amazing. I mean, uh, both from, a uh, retention and health and, uh, and maintaining our business, um, but really phenomenal. Well said. And, you know, all of those things that you just talked about right there is just really that way to keep us all connected, right? In such a different mm -hmm. world and such a different environment and just making sure that at the forefront of all of it, whether it's with our teammates or our partners or our clients or our communities, just everybody really staying connected. And it's been yep. uh, just a really incredible thing to see. Jen, anything you wanted to add to that? 
Yeah, I think we did a really excellent job of putting teammates first, right? And as, as Suzanne had said, right, kind of creating this environment that I really think boiled down to trust and making sure that as we had to be pulled into that virtual environment, everybody understood that we were still one team and that we were still there to support one another. And we were there to collaborate and make sure that um, everybody still had that, um, that team spirit and the confidence to raise their hand and not only, you know, share and, and share ideas, ideas, but really to raise their hand and say, you know, I may be struggling or I need some help. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and, you know, that's something that we're going to continue, right? So the team right now is working on making sure that uh, we have that mental health support and um, just the support from a general and overall benefits perspective, just to be sure that mm -hmm. if somebody does need something that they know where to reach out and that we have a team of people that can jump in and get them aligned to resources. And I think, you know, there's... Uh, it, it's not over yet, right? The people are still feeling that way. So I think that having that level of support is extremely important and it will continue, right? It's something that we're never gonna uh, ever lose sight of at this point, right? So it's really important. Brooke, how about you? Anything you wanted to add to that? I would just say, um, it, it, and this will sound obvious, but it couldn't have been more important than it has been in the last 18 months is communication. And what we've done it with, I mean, think about how much information has changed and how quickly the story develops. Even when we didn't have the answer yet, we were communicating, whether it was about return to work, return to the offices or vaccine mandates, all these things. Hey, we know this is going on. We know you have questions. Here's the update. We haven't made a decision on this. We're working on that. Just getting out in front of it and communicating. I think that helped teammates to feel um to know that we we're on top of it and kind of going back to Jen's point, we said from the day one, and I remember this, it's just indelible in my mind, day one, this is going to be a wild ride. And, and, but here's the guiding principles that we're going to use to make decisions. And the first most important thing is going to be teammate health and safety. And we have stuck by that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so just to shift a little bit, but I think that this really does kind of speak to everything that we've been going through over, you know, the last 20 months. Um, Jen, I'm going to start with you on this one. So how do we really ensure that all of us are working together toward that common goal? So we've kind of talked about what's happened and how we've really come together as a community and stayed connected over the last uh, 20 months as a, as a teammate community and with our you know, partners and clients. Um, but there's a lot of different priorities. So how do we make sure that everybody's really working together toward that common goal, not only in this environment where we might not all be in the same area, but just in general? Right. Well, I think we first and foremost have to be intentional, right, about building that team environment. And it is my job as a leader to make sure, right, that I am familiar with everybody on the team, where their focus is, how they can function, how well they can function, can they take a stretch stretch goal or not and you just generally how are they doing right are they are they you know um you know in in great spirits do they need some help and i think that it's really important to make sure that we have that um that that leadership touch and we do that right very regularly in our in our uh connection meetings that we have with our teammates and it's just something that i think makes sense so that people do understand right we're all in it together and we're here to create that again that safe space so that we all can collaborate and we all can push forward together for those common goals. All right. Fantastic. Brooke, Suzanne, anything you want to add to that really about kind of ensuring that alignment to make sure that we're all reaching toward that delivering results on that common, on that yeah. common goal? A couple things come to mind for me and, and I've learned this more and more the longer I've been in, in, in leadership positions is just recognizing that everyone fits into the puzzle a little bit differently and never taking for granted that everyone understands what that puzzle should look like or does look like when it all comes together, right? And so to John's point, being really intentional about, you know, setting the goals, setting the mission and tying people's kind of day to day, what, the, what their objectives are to that big mission. And I think about, and I know everyone knows the story, but it just, it, it works. It resonates, right? The story in the sixties, when we were going for the lunar landing mission and JFK is touring NASA and he stops and asks the janitor why he's working so late. And he says, Mr. President, I'm working to help put a man on the moon. You know, everybody's got a, a spot and, and just making sure everybody ties to that. 
and, and one thing I think that we do really well, and, and we and I see us do more and more of this, is celebrating the wins that show what good looks like and being really um, careful to uh, or, or thoughtful about recognizing the people that contributed to that win. And it could be an internal win or an external win too, but calling out, not everybody faces the client, not everybody touches right. the client, right? But everybody has, has a role to play in celebrating those wins and kind of goes back to communication really helps. I love that. How about you, Suzanne? Yeah. I would only add, and having the courage and the courtesy to always hold each other accountable. Mm -hmm. I love that. On top of everything the other two yeah. said. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Agreed completely. Um, so Jen, I, I let's let's shift over to diversity and inclusion a bit. And um, there's a ton of diversity and inclusion initiatives that we have going on, both with our internal teammates that impact the community, but also with suppliers and, and partners. So um, how do we make sure that we're focused on that with the diversity and inclusion in the existing programs um, and really everything that we're doing to impact everybody that we come in contact with each day? Right. So from a procurement perspective, right, the Supplier Diversity Program Office is there to, to really kind of um, form direct initiatives, right, so that we're all clear, right, that we need to do better at several things, including diversifying our supplier bench and diversifying our spend and really kind of pushing ourselves, right? So we've had prior goals, but making sure that we're pushing ourselves forward um, to do better. And for us, that really, you know, is something that um, is just going to come day by day meetings, making sure that we're all aligned and we all have that common goal, but bridging that gap then to, to kind of, you know, do nothing more than bring more business to those diverse categories, whether it's women owned, minority, all of the categories together. So it really comes for me just down to making sure that everybody is clear. Here's what the initiative looks like, right? And here's how you can you can help participate. And you may not think that you can help participate, but you can, we all can. And so it's really, it really for the most part, it's just nothing more than making sure that we're aligned and that we're communicating with one another. And we make sure that we are taking care of those those um, those categories that um, are are very important to us as a as a community and as a public company. All right, fantastic. Uh, Brooke, Suzanne, again, anything to add there? No, no, I, 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 no. <laughs> I think <laughs> our initiatives are phenomenal, and um, we've got you know again, it's that 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 everybody's trusting to get jump on board and mm -hmm. move something forward and good intentions and challenging each other and goodness. Yeah, a lot of that. A lot of that. Um, and Jen, just to just to go a little bit more on what you were saying about supplier diversity programs. So obviously, you know, on the call today and people that work and and are connected and partnered with Women in Cloud. So um, for those that are minority owned, uh, women owned companies that that with partners like that, how do you engage with them? What what is that process there? Well, where we're engaging today, right, we are attending as many of our, um, you know, our client initiatives as possible. There are tons of events that are going on. Um, I've attended three, right, in the last month to make sure that we're not only supporting the client's initiative, right, but we're doing our best to network. We're doing our best to make sure that um, we're there to support, and whether that means just attending, but more so attending, um, you know, more uh, matchmaking events, right? So right. making sure that we can tie off with wherever our procurement needs are. If we need someone um, in the service space, if we need someone more in the internal procurement space, making sure that we're matchmaking and we're um, we're opening up opportunities for those diverse businesses, women-owned, minority-owned, et cetera, and, and then having me connect with them, right? So our diversity office um, is, is, you know, small staffed, but at the same time, um, I make sure that it's my job to to not only when we choose someone to spend time with them to understand you know you know what not only what their line card looks like right but what are their priorities you know where are they mm -hmm. at today in the marketplace and then continue on from there whether we're able to fit them into our community or not within insight but making sure that i check in with them quarterly has anything changed maybe something's changed with us to kind of keep that networking going and to keep that connection going I love that. That's awesome. All right. So we are almost to time. So I did want to close with just asking each of you one question. Uh, 
with you. So anybody on here that um, that is listening, uh, looking for you know work, looking for partnerships, looking for connection, just looking to learn about other companies and what's out there, uh, what is the one thing that you would say is the most important thing to take away from this um, about Insight and about us and our culture and what it is that we do each day? The one thing, holy moly! Okay. It's going to be really the hard. One thing, holy smokes! You know, I think you could do. That, you can do too. I, well, I'll <laughs> leave. The, I got to leave something for the ladies. You know, I think the one. You know, as it comes to partnership and as it comes to making connections, I think the one thing to take away from inside is the scope and scale and commitment to those functions and relationships is so broad it's it's just so rich with opportunity that you know even even if you know us as a you know a global a, you know a global fortune 500 company in any particular area right. you know probably a fraction of what really is capable for the network and the partnerships and the talent right. that we have um so so you know if you've learned anything you've learned a fraction in this session about really the breadth of opportunity that's out there. Absolutely. Well said. Definitely. Brooke, how about you? Um, this is a tough one. <laughs> um, what I would say is just a reminder that, you know, if you look at our history, Insight Story is such an evolution, right? From where we started, um, you know, as a, as a product reseller to where we are as a solution integrator and all of the the, 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 the organic as well as acquisitions that we've taken over time to grow and just reminding that th there's, there's relevance, relevance of, and, and I think that evolution is why we're so successful in the mm -hmm. industry. Um, keep that in mind personally, right? All of us have to evolve and change and grow and take on new skills and be curious and be ambitious. Right. And, and, uh, and that's what I would say, you know, I remind myself of that all the time or I remind my team of that there's a corporate story there, but there's a very personal story there as well. Absolutely. Great. Thank you so much. And Jen, how about you? I think um, like both of the ladies, beyond the, the capabilities and in the evolution of our company, I think what you can take away really is, I, I, I believe, having a better sense of our values, right? Mm -hmm. Understanding that we're all there for one another, not just on this panel, but in all of the other departments. We're there for one another. We're there to grow. We're there to learn together because it really comes down to whether you're in one call with a few people, you're on a, a larger team call, or you're in this kind of event, we're all better as a team. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I, it's so true. It's so, so true. I cannot thank you all enough uh, for being here with me today. Uh, I get to work with you uh, all the time in different <laughs> capacities. And so to be able to moderate a panel uh, with all of you brilliant uh, leaders at Insight just makes me so happy. So thank you very, very much for being here with thank us. Awesome. And also for, thank you. yes, absolutely. And then for all of you that attended, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, so happy to share all of this. Obviously, we're very passionate about Insight and what we do each day. So we're just happy to be able to share a little bit of that with all of you. So thank you so much for having us. And Raisa, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, ladies. What an amazing panel. My goodness, Insight really does sound like such an incredible place to work. It was so great to see the way you all connect with each other as well. That that really came through in in your panel today. So thank you for sharing the the values and and a lot of the the behind the scenes things that we don't really you know know about um, mm -hmm. that and sharing it with with our uh, audience here today. So ladies, I'm going to go ahead and invite each of you to just go ahead and click mic off, camera off and that'll take you off stage. And I'm going to transition to the next part of today's programming, where we are going to have a cloud solution showcase. So um, that means that we have two entrepreneurs from the Women in Cloud ecosystem that are gonna be sharing with you a bit about their innovative solutions. So we have two entrepreneurs today, and the first one that's going to be sharing her name is Geeta Ramaswamy. She's the CTO and co-founder of Trace IO. And uh, Geeta is an experienced technical architect and product manager. She has over 25 years of experience in the IT industry. 
She's also the CTO of Minerva Software, a custom data analytics services company that she founded in 2016. Gita holds a bachelor's in computer science and engineering from the University of Kerala in India and a master's in electrical engineering and computer science from the University of Illinois at Chicago. She is a yoga enthusiast and a bibliophile who lives in Chicago with her family. So with that, I'm going to invite Gita to come on stage with me so you can learn about her solution. And she'll take five minutes and then we'll uh, invite Dina. Gita, welcome. Thank you so much, Reza. And let me go ahead and share my screen and please let me know if... Wonderful. I think everyone can see my screen. Hello, everyone. Again, I'm very excited to be here, and I would love to use this time to share a transformative story about risk. To begin with, in your organization, you probably work with a lot of counterparties, be it your suppliers, your distributors, your partners, or even your customers. And your organization might be a well-run engine on autopilot. However, business risk is always around the corner. And the thing about risk is it manifests in two forms. You have quantifiable on one side and non-quantifiable on the other side. Quantifiable risk, you can usually pin a dollar number to it. So what that means is it, it's usually related to financials, so credit, loans, and the like. And organizations typically do a great job of managing it. But when it comes to non-quantifiable risk, that's a bit more nebulous because it could be systemic related to the environment or social or the economy or operational related to fraud or even reputational. So the question to ask is, how do you track risk to your counterparties today if you do? If so, how often, how recent is the up-to-date risk profile on each of the counterparties, assuming there is one on file, and do you get early risk alerts? If the question to any of the answers is no, then chances are that you're not measuring risk. And if you can't measure it, you cannot manage it. And the thing about risk is your counterparty's risk soon becomes your risk down the road. But to be fair, there are several barriers to ongoing daily risk assessment on your counterparties. And to begin with, manual financial data consolidation and combining that with subjective data analysis from the internet is just a very, very cumbersome. And it almost takes up 80% of time for your analysts. And to top that, after all this hard work that the analyst goes through, the business profiles ex expire in less than 24 hours. Why? Because we live in a time and age where digital data is churned out almost every hour of the day for any business on the planet. Now, imagine a system that combines quantitative financial data with qualitative subjective digital data. So on the one hand, you have your financial applications, your credit bureau portals and the like. And on the other hand, you have your digital data from public news feeds such as Google, social media, or even commercial platforms such as LexisNexis. What if these two are combined and we can put together a single holistic risk profile? So in a sense, a quantitative numerical index that monitors risk signals 24 seven and generates early warnings. In my company, we have developed the solution called Trace, which automates this process and specifically does three things. The first one is that it computes an updated risk profile 24 7 365 on every counterparty on file. So you, it has coverage for 100% of the entities in your ecosystem. The second thing is it creates a single trace risk index that foretells and detects any early red flags. And last but not the least, it eliminates subjective data analysis to the extent that you can recoup 80% of the lost analyst time. To put things in perspective, I want to conclude by citing an example. Say you're a bank with 10,000 customers in your portfolio, and these customers are not necessarily your publicly listed companies that you read about in the Wall Street Journal on a day-to-day -day basis. However, nevertheless, these are significant companies for the bank. And supposing the biggest customer is running into operational fraud, and there are signals about this in the digital media. With an analyst, 
finding, figuring this out is just impossible to do. But with a system such as Trace, it will detect this fact in a matter of hours and propel this information to the bank so that they can engage in proactive risk mitigation action and, and get ahead of the risk in front of them. To sum up, if you think automating non-quantifiable risk and merging that with quantifiable risk that you can properly define can benefit your organization, I'm here to help. Again, excited to be here. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Gita, for that wonderful uh, presentation and for sharing about your solution. Um, for all of you that are here with us today, you will be able to meet with Gita out in the virtual lounge when we get to, uh, to that portion of the programming. So Gita, thank you and well, well done. You can go ahead and click mic off, camera off. And let's go ahead and introduce the next entrepreneur that's gonna be joining us. So next up, we have uh, Dina Moskowitz. She is the founder and CEO of SASMAX. Um, so about a bit about Dina. Dina has been the CEO from inception and has been involved in cloud-based businesses and or internet technologies for the majority of her career. And as the CEO and founder, um, Dina oversaw the development and launch of a platform for uh, cloud-based uh, online data storage and executed a private white label licensing distribution strategy. She was also the principal and founder of Corporate Business Plan Associates, through which she has provided business plan and strategic consulting services to early and mid-stage companies, primarily in the technology space, for more than 15 years. Dina lives in La Jolla, California with her family and is an active member of the board of Seacrest Village Retirement Communities. And with that, I'm going to um, invite Dina to come up and join us here so she can share a bit about her solution, SASMAX. Welcome, Dina. So Dina, you should see a pop-up on your side granting you access to join me on screen here. And you can come and share with us. While we wait for Dina uh, to, to come up, I just want to uh, share with you a little bit about, oh, there you are, Dina. <laughs> Hi. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and stop my screen share, and you can take it away. Fantastic. I am looking for my screen to share. So let me hopefully it will show up. Um, apologies for the technical difficulties. It worked during the earlier thing. So can you see my screen now? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can, Dina. Go right ahead. Awesome. Okay. Well, hi, everyone. And thank you for um, having me on this. The event so far has been great. And um, Amy, your team looks amazing. And I hope to someday have a, a, a company large enough to have a, a, a team like yours and a corporate culture that really is that innovative and amazing to work with and for. Um, I'm CEO and founder of Sorry. SAS. Excuse yeah. me, Dina. Sorry, we're seeing um, your entire desktop. So if you want to bring up your specific oh. slides. Well, that's okay. Um, I thought I was looking at my slide deck. So let me see. I'm not sure what to do. So we were um, seeing the Remo window. Right. And let me see if hmm. it's right now when it says what I can share, it's only allowing me to share that. And I've had this happen in his, some other ones. Let me see. Um, okay. So I do have the, the deck you sent to me, so I can go ahead and share my screen and you can just tell me when to advance, all right? That would be perfect, fantastic. Okay, so you can go ahead and stop your screen share. Okay. Fantastic, I'll bring mine up. Good. We love technical difficulties. <laughs> That's okay, we're in the virtual space. This is totally fine. Okay, um, all right, Dina, go ahead and take it away. 
Fantastic. So, yeah, so I think we can, um, so yeah, this is me. Um, and I basically have been in uh, what's called channel partnerships for uh, a good portion of my career in the cloud software space. And my, I exist today. Um, I live for helping B2B software and technology companies get to market through channel partnerships. And I'll tell you more about that as we go. And so we can move to the next slide. But um, basically, the reason and how I got into this place of um, partnerships is that I had a prior company, a data storage company called Critical Digital Data, and it did very well. And my, my investors were happy at the end of the day, but I could have done so much more and taking that business so much further had I known about this whole go to market strategy called channel partnering. And for entrepreneurs, especially um, ones that are just emerging and building new technology in the software as a service space, a lot of times they don't realize that it takes more than direct sales and more than direct marketing to get to market. It really takes a whole partnership community because the partners out there are the trusted advisors who already have relationships with customers. They're the ones who can be the um, referrals, the integrators, the trainers, and the ones who are providing support and the selection. And sometimes they're even the consumers of what you're selling. So we exist to help sales teams and marketers to optimize and accelerate their indirect sales channels. And we've innovated a platform, a technology platform that makes that easier and more efficient. And so let's move to the next slide, please. What I've done here is I've put together a really quick slide that says, well, what is this indirect sales channel? I know on the enterprise side, you probably realize it. And someone like Insight is right in there with the resellers and VARs and, and uh, very strategic trusted advisors who implement solutions for big companies. Um, for the vendors and the entrepreneurs on the call today who don't think about this, um, when you're going to market, you have to consider how to go through these partners, whether it's directly through partners or with distributors, et cetera. So we service all of those types of companies in the middle and keeping in mind that today there's about two and a half million of those types of providers and it's going to be growing and the demand is supposed to grow by 10X over the next several years. So it's a pretty important piece of technology go to market strategies. Next slide. It's we can skip this next one as well. It's really, it's called partnership because it is about trusted advisor relationships. Now what's going on is instead of it being linear today, it's morphed into a blob. And so when you're going to market and looking at who to partner with, how do you know which direction? There's so many different types of partners today um, domain experts and managed service providers and telecom agents and marketing agencies, et cetera you have to really navigate it's it's complicated and if we turn to the next slide that and, and uh, by the way i didn't make that up that's from an industry analyst forrester talking about what that you know what it looks like today the landscape and how complicated it is and so what's been going on for years um, and it's only getting escalated now is that finding the right partners to partner with is very difficult there has been no access to data about partners and so it's been manual and time consuming and expensive. And it's also because of the lack of data, it's been a very unreliable process to know which partners are the right partners for you. And then with executives turning over and having those relationships, again, being able to grasp which partners are important matter. And as a result, the evidence is clear that most vendors out there who are investing in building partner programs are seeing that only 15 to 20% of them are actively driving revenue because 80 to 90% are the wrong partnerships in the first place. So next slide. So we, we decided to say, how can we help solve that problem? How can we create a, um, a tool that allows you to find the right partners more rapidly with the right types of um, criteria? And we leveraged and looked at what's going on in other industries. And if you go to the next slide, we were able to say, if you could build a solution that looks at all the different types of business attributes of partners and you make them easily searchable, you can now determine and be proactively discriminatory on who you're going to recruit. So next slide. 
And that's what really we did was we built a tool, it's a partner optimizer platform. And what we did in that sec in order to build it is we looked at what are the attributes of an ideal partner. And for entrepreneurs who are going to market, it's important that your partners have the right expertise, the right solutions, the right business model, and the right customers. And they have to be great to work with, like a company like Insight. Um, and of course, they have to be driving revenue to you. So the next slide is just a little, uh, I think we're, we're out of time, but this is what Partner Optimizer looks like. And we've been bringing it to market. And so next slide would be great as well. <laughs> um, so with Partner Optimizer, what we've been seeing with our customers to date, and it's only been out since uh, uh, Q1, is that we're helping teams who are building partnerships to save time by recruiting over, you know, by 50% 50, 50 or more faster. They're saving a lot of money doing it because they're starting with the right partners. They're saving a lot of energy and they're accelerating their sales because they're starting out with the right partners in the first place. So that's really what our core is, our essence, is helping channel teams to find the right partners more quickly and efficiently. So if you're interested in learning more, please feel free to reach out. And thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Dina, uh, for your great presentation. Again, if any of you are interested with me, uh, in meeting with Dina, you can do so in the virtual lounge when we go into our next experience today, which most of you are very, very excited about. So Dina, I'm going to have you go ahead and turn, click mic off, camera off. And I'll talk you all through what's next and what to expect in, in the advisory roundtable discussions. So this is where you get the opportunity to meet with leaders from, uh, from Insight. You can also meet the entrepreneurs that have shared about their solutions today. And in this experience, you, um, you get to network in the virtual lounge. So we have a couple of rules of engagement. We're going to give you about uh, 25 minutes or so to connect with these leaders at Insight. Uh, you can find the topics of what is being discussed at each table at the um, just typed right under it. And then also, if you're sitting alone at a table, don't be shy. You can just uh, join another table that goes for advisors as well to join in that conversation. So to navigate around, all you're going to do is double click on an open seat to move from one table to another. We're gonna have um, a couple minutes, as I said, to do that. There will be a timer at the top of the screen and then we'll come back for closing remarks. So I just wanna show you here a couple of the advisors from Insight that are gonna be joining us. Um, we have leaders speaking on uh, HR, uh, partner alliances, go to market, marketing. So lots of things are gonna be covered. And I'd actually like to uh, invite uh, one or two of the advisors just to come up briefly and just introduce themselves and share what they're most looking forward to, um, to getting out of today's conversations and what you can meet with them to learn about. Um, so I'd like to invite uh, Andrea Wrinkle to come join me. So Andrea, if you wouldn't mind, you should see a pop-up on your screen there. And then let's also have uh, John Canaran come on. So you should see a pop up and you'll just take a minute to uh, say hi to everyone and uh, share a bit about yourself and what what folks can learn from uh, from meeting with you today. Hi, sure. Andrea Winkle, I'm the director of marketing for Insight. Um, I'm on Amy Protexter's team and um, I'm going to be able to answer any questions about how you partner with us on uh, marketing strategy. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, John, welcome. Hey, good afternoon. I'm John Carnahan. I run our uh, corporate development office and I'm looking forward to meeting with uh, the folks here and talking about our M&A strategy uh, and how that feeds into our overall corporate strategy. And, you know, you heard some things along the way on uh, how we ensure it aligns with uh, our cultural fit uh, in building out uh, a, a tremendous brand and, and go to market for, for Insight. Fantastic. Thank you so much, John and Andrea. You guys can go ahead and just click mic off, camera off. Um, so what, what you're seeing right now on the screen is a floor plan so you can see where you'll be able to find these folks. But most important is the topics that you can find at the different tables. So we have company culture, solutions, how to navigate the company, corporate development, co-sell and channel opportunities. There's a few tables for that. HR and recruitment procurement and partner alliances. So 
Uh, in essence of time, I am not going to share the how-to video about how to use Remo. I want you all to get into the networking. So I'm going to transition us all to the virtual lounge and to navigate to those tables. Once again, just remember to double click on an open seat and turn on your mic and camera and you'll be able to engage in conversation. We'll see you in the lounge. Welcome back, everyone. How was that experience for you getting to connect with with leaders and and folks that um, have given up their time to extend learnings to you from the Insight team. Excellent. I'm seeing some comments in the chat. Great session. Um, so with that, I want to invite a couple of the, the leaders that were um, back on stage just to share what the experience was like for them. Um, so I'm going to invite Amy to come back up. Also, uh, I see Jen was here. Who else do we have? Suzanne, Kate. All of you should be seeing pop-ups on your on your end. I'm welcoming you to join me on stage. So, again, we want to thank all of you for really taking the time to be to be here with with us and meeting the community. So I'll just ask a few of you uh, to tell me what, what your experience was like. Uh, so Amy, how about we start with you? Um, well, first of all, I just wanna thank everybody who attended today. Um, I think you can tell I have a little bit of passion I work for and I love being able to tell the story of, of who we, what we're up to, um, you know, because we want more like-minded people to join us and we have a lot of opportunity at Insight. So I um, had a great time and really appreciated the, uh, the opportunity and the platform. Fantastic. Thank you, Amy. Uh, Kate, why don't you share what your experience was like uh, meeting folks today? Sure. Um, it was great, as always. I love these connections. Um, I love the Women in Cloud community. Um, I had a chance to speak with um, Garnett Weber about her market research, uh, qualitative research platform, which was super interesting. Um, so it was great, as always, and really appreciate the opportunity. Um, and thanks for everyone for joining us today. Excellent. And thank you again to all of you. Really a heartfelt thanks to all of you at the Insight team. Uh, I know that our entrepreneurs and job seekers really, really appreciated your time today. Um, so I want to invite you all to just go ahead and click mic off, camera off. I want to invite uh, one of the entrepreneurs that was, was here, actually uh, two of them to just share their feedback. So I'm going to have um, bring up Garnett Weber, Weber, and then I know that Sonal was there and uh, communicating with some folks. So each of you should see a pop up. Hi, Garnett. Hi. <laughs> Happy no. Friday. Hi, Sonal. Happy Friday. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, Sonal, I'll start with you. Why don't you share with us what your experience was like uh, in the connections you made and conversations you had uh, at today's lunch and learn. Uh, thank you, Reza. It is always uh, uh, it is always wonderful to attend uh, Women in Cloud events. It is uh, extremely meaningful, and it has been a great, great platform to connect with, like uh, such authentic uh, and amazing uh, lead, uh, women leaders. I had a great conversation with uh, uh, Jennifer Marks uh, regarding supplier diversity uh, uh, program at Insight. They have a, a great program running, and I'm looking forward uh, to connecting with her soon. Fantastic. How, how was your experience? What did you, what was your key takeaway from, from your conversations today? Uh, well, it's, uh, it was great. I love the beginning and hearing the great things about culture. And as I go into strategic planning for our company for the upcoming year, it was fun. I love having the whole business plan on one page because I'm thinking as we grow our team, getting everyone aligned and I love the different cultural uh, pieces and it's making me really evaluate uh, what's, what's ideal and what do I really want to drive uh, within my company. And you can see it when uh, I had a great conversation uh, with Jennifer Marks and Amy and uh, Kate. And it was really interesting to see how uh, they're really living and breathing that culture every day and uh, very inspiring. Fantastic. And and I could see that as as well, even even through the panel and, and uh, Amy's opening. Fan. So yeah, absolutely. Definitely one, one of the best for sure. One of the best. Um, 
<laughs> so ladies, thank you for joining us today. I'm going to invite you to go ahead and click mic off camera off. Thanks for sharing your feedback. And to all of you that are still here with us, we want to invite you to join us at the upcoming uh, WIC annual summit that is coming up January 26 is the first day. It's a multi-day experience. And at that, you'll get the chance to meet with other fortune companies and leaders just like uh, like Insight. And uh, we also have lots of other companies that are, that are gonna be participating there. Over 100 speakers secured, four boot camps to really unlock um, immersive experiences and action for you. So uh, the links have been put up in the chat there. You can learn more at womenincloud.com. We encourage you to join us at our virtual summit that's coming up next month. And then finally, we just wanna thank you all again for, for joining us and, and sticking through. I know we've gone a couple of minutes over, but thank you for your attention and we hope you've ha you have a great weekend and happy holidays.